Good evening. Welcome to Addict TV, your world TV, your everything. This is another edition of our Bible expedition, Journeying Through the Bible with I, Brother Kennedy Apindi. We have done the book of Ephesians, we have done the book of Colossians. Tonight, I want us to introduce another book, the book of Galatians. As we begin, let's pray. Thank Holy Spirit, be the teacher. May you open the mysteries that are even hidden in the Bible to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we encourage you, subscribe, share, and follow us in all our social media handles and God will bless you. The book of Galatians was written by Paul. These are one of the numerous books written by Paul. The city called Galatia, Galatia Paul visited more than once during his missionary journeys. And through these visits, a church was birthed in this city. Later on, there are some people who came and started teaching, especially about the law. They received Christ by faith, but some started to teach otherwise that salvation or righteousness can come by the fulfillment of the law. Because of this, Paul had to write this letter to correct the wrongs. And that's why even there is a verse where he rebukes the church in this city, saying, you foolish Galatians who bewitched you. They started in spirit and now they were now trying to fulfill righteousness by following the law. It's a six chapter book. Today we'll begin in chapter number one of the book. Welcome even as we read chapter number one of Galatians, verse number one. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. In the introduction, we see the writer. He calls himself Paul. And there are things that he mentions that are very important. One, he says that Paul, an apostle. So introduce himself by telling us his office, he was an apostle. Then also he gives us who gave the authority for him to be in that office. He says, send not from men nor by man. Paul tells this church that was never sent by man or from men. This alludes to the fact that there is possible that as a minister, you can be sent by men. But Paul was never sent by man. He was sent by God. My question to you, my brother and my sister, especially those who are serving, might be a pastor, a teacher, as I am, a prophet, an apostle. You are sent by who? Because whoever sent you is the one you are going to serve. Now, we dilute truth, mostly because we want to satisfy men. If you are sent by men, you will satisfy men. If you are sent by God, just like Paul, you are going to serve and ensure that you run that race, even as Paul did. As we continue, chapter number one, verse two, it says, and all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. Another thing that comes from the introduction of this book is the recipient or who the letter was being written to. It's clearly shown it's written to the churches in Galatia. And as I said in the introduction, he was correcting some wrongs in this church, as we shall see. Verse number three. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In verse number three and four, 
it shows another thing about Jesus Christ. For says, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age? Who gave himself? Jesus Christ upon that cross, even during crucifixion, he gave himself. He was God. He had power but he allowed himself to be sacrificed. So he gave himself, even his soul. Jesus died because he gave up his soul. And he continued to say, according to the will of our God and the Father. Jesus the Son was working or surrendered himself according to the will of God the Father. Not his will. You remember in Gethsemane when he prayed, he prayed and said and asked the Father if it was possible, the Father to remove the cup that was before him, but not his will, but the will of the Father. Yes, Jesus Christ gave himself upon that cross and he was doing so according to the will of of God who is the Father. Also here again shows us the triune nature of God. Jesus was God as a son, uh, but he was also living under the will of God who was the Father. As we continue, now we see the reason as to why Paul is writing this letter. He's writing to correct a certain kind of gospel that was being preached to the church in Galatia. Verse number 8 now shows us this. The Bible says, so verse number 6, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. He says he's astonished. He is surprised when he heard that this church is turning away from their initial gospel, the gospel that they received, the gospel that led them to salvation. That was by grace. Verse number seven, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Eight, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. He says that even if an angel or anyone else, including Paul himself, could come and preach another gospel, let that person be cursed. So this church started to believe another gospel. It's not only that church. This letter is relevant to me and you and even to the church in the current dispensation. There are various gospels that are now coming in, especially in regards to salvation. Salvation is by grace. We learned in Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 8 that is a gift of God. By grace and by grace alone we are saved. It is not by works that none can be boast. So also these people after receiving that salvation that came by grace, some people started to pervert, to divert, to change, to give a wrong kind of gospel. And Paul says, even if it is I or anyone else, including angels, if they can come with a different gospel, I don't know the gospel that you have had. If probably you are born again, how were you born again? That is the greatest question. Because you could be having a different version of the gospel. Salvation is by grace. Romans 8 tells us so. Sorry, Romans 10 from verse 8. If you shall believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. In the book of Acts, we are told there is no other name given through which Mankind can be saved except the name Jesus. Look unto him and live. I don't know what you are looking unto. People look unto men. People look unto deeds. People look unto acts. People doing strange things in the name of seeking God and even salvation. Even in our nation, the other day we heard of Shakahola, where people were fasting in order to die to see Christ. 
These are the gospels that at times come and they are contrary with the word of God. Let's continue to read what the word says, verse number nine. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accept them, accepted, let them be under God's curse. He repeats the same statement, shows us how serious he was about it. If anyone can come and preach a contrary gospel, probably you are a preacher and the one preaching now contrary gospel, woe unto you. And let us stick to the word of God. Probably you are following a different gospel. It is not by works, it's by grace. Salvation is not about the church. Salvation is not about the attire. The center is Jesus Christ. It's through him and through him alone are we saved. Not by what we do, not by how we walk, not by what we eat, but accepting as Lord and savior that's the gospel 10 verse number 10 says am i now trying to win the approval of human beings or of god or am i trying to please people if i was still trying to please people i would not be a servant of christ am i trying to please men or god that question Paul asked, and the same question we need to ask ourselves, what you are doing, are you pleasing men or are you pleasing God? We will see as we continue to read the book in chapter number two, Cephas, or some call it Cephas, or Peter. We see Paul and Peter differ in opinion concerning how the Gentiles can become Christians. When Peter even now decided not to eat with the Gentiles, they were calling them uncircumcised because they thought that the uncircumcised are not godly or Christian enough. No. Peter too at that moment wanted to please men. My question to you and I, are we trying to please men or are you trying to please God? The one that has called us is God, is the person we need to please, not man. Be you a minister of the word, we are pleasing God. Be you a servant of God, we are pleasing God. God, are you a follower of Jesus Christ? We need to please Christ, not men. Because even us as followers, even in churches, we are pleasing our pastors. We are pleasing our leaders. Maybe you are married, you are pleasing your husband, your wife. You are pleasing your parents. Not so. Let us please God. Because if we are pleasing men, that's hypocrisy. And there is no Christ in us. That's the gospel that Paul preached about as we continue just before we take a short break paul says in verse 11 i want you to know brothers and sisters that the gospel i preached is not of human origin why are we not supposed to please men the gospel that we have is not from human origin at times we think these are made up things, they are made of men, no. Gospel is divine. You remember in the book of Acts, when the apostles, the disciples were continuing to preach and speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are in authority or in the power that time called and arrested them many a times and even warned them not to speak in the name of Jesus. But there was one wise man who came and told them that if this thing is made of men, it shall die. But if it's not, you'll find yourself wrestling or fighting against the gods. The gospel is not of the human origin. It is of God. The book of John says, in the beginning there was word, and this word was with God, and this word was God. This word became flesh, and this word is what we are sharing. These are the mysteries that as we go through the Bible expedition, by God's grace, God is revealing unto us. 12, the Bible says, 
I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Probably remember how Paul was called. He had his Damascus moment on his way to Damascus to persecute church. Lo, he met the light, he heard a sound, and he was on the ground, and the question came, why are you persecuting me? He never knew that he was persecuting Jesus Christ. He thought he was persecuting the church. So he says here, he never received the gospel from man, nor was he taught. Paul, none taught him the gospel. He received it by revelation. So even us, this word is hidden. We need revelation to understand it. Even the Bible, that's why we need to pray. God, may you reveal unto me what is hidden in this word and you will walk in truth. Paul received it by revelation, not by teaching or training. 13. It alludes to what I've just shared unto you. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb, called me by his grace to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. Paul now tells us how he was called. I want us to take a short break as you meditate upon that calling and even upon your calling so that we know this truth and we shall be blessed. If I have goals, then it means I won't venture into the goat business because I cannot afford that capital. If there is too much taxation on businesses, it means you are even demotivating me from starting a business because I am working for you, I am not benefiting anything. So taxation is really not the way to go. Basically, they don't pay tax. They don't have a, what do we call it? A salary. They don't have a salary mm -hmm. that is taken to the bank mm -hmm. because yeah. this salary is basically deducted from the bank. Mm -hmm. A motorcycle rider mm -hmm. doesn't have even a pay slip. Mm -hmm. So they're not the ones who are uh, being benefited. Ah, nyotangu kuzima, nyotangu kuzima. Uh, me campaign yangu ilikuwa fine hata nominations zilikuwa fine so ilifuka tu appoint ile kaka mwaza yao akasema ni aje wache kuwe tu ni hivi eh uh, boys amekopa for one man uh, for one term tulikuwa tunataka tu mwachia mali cheze na vijana usiende hapo usifanye hivi you know they are given them it's no, it's play with it's boys uh, yeah, i know it's not bad listen <laughs> listen but what are we telling our young boys? You know, because from the that. Welcome back again, Addict TV, your world TV, your everything. We are in the book of Galatians. We have just looked at the introduction. Paul writing a letter to a church in Galatia, correcting them of some wrongs, especially because of the Judaism. People who came and started to teach them even how to be better Christians or to be righteous, but instead of relying on the teachings of God. And we just ended our previous part on the call of Paul. And that's where we'll begin once again. Paul persecuted the church. One day, even after getting letters from authorities, on his way going to arrest and to 
persecute those who are following the way. Christians those days were called those who are following the way. On his way, he met Jesus Christ. And Jesus, by revelation, gave him the gospel. And that's what he was telling me this church that's the gospel he received he was not taught by man nor did he receive it from man but from god through revelation and we just read a few verses when he was speaking on how he was called i want to just start from verse 15 for us to flow but when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. He says that when God was pleased, why pleased? That's why we say salvation is by grace. When God is pleased, he is the one who pleased. How is going to be pleased? He knows, we don't know, salvation is by grace. There are people who are not born again, that those who are born again, it's by grace. The Bible says, a sow I hate, Jacob I love. We cannot explain why it was so. So there was a point that God was pleased to reveal himself or to call Paul. He revealed himself to Paul. And Paul says, the one that was set him apart from his mother's womb. My brothers and my sisters, we should know that by the time you are in my, your mother's womb, God already set you apart for a particular assignment, for a particular purpose. So one primary prayer we should always do is to ask God, may you reveal unto me my purpose on this world, my purpose on this earth. It tells Jeremiah that before he was formed, he knew him. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he set you apart for a certain reason, for a certain purpose. Paul was set apart to declare or preach the gospel to the Gentiles. That's what he's revealing unto us here. And he says that when he was called, he never consulted a man. His was by revelation. Uh, 17 the bible says i did not go up to jerusalem to see those who are apostles before i was but i went into arabia later i returned to damascus he says that when he was called he never went to jerusalem there are those who are already called there are those who are already somewhere that's the church that he was persecuting so he never went there he went to Arabia, though later on he was able to join other apostles. 18, the Bible says, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. Cephas or Cephas is Peter. So after three years is when he came and even met Peter. And he was with Peter for 15 days. 19. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that, I was, that what I am writing you is no lie. It tells us other people or men of God or apostles that he met. He met James, who was the brother of the Lord or the brother of of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had a brother called James. So this is one of the people that Paul met when he came to Jerusalem. Then he gives us the story of his journey. From there, where did he go to? The Bible says from verse number 21, Then I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only had the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So as he started to preach, there are areas he went to initially, and there are areas he never went to. And he says that now people started to hear that message that the one who persecuted us is also now preaching the same gospel. My brother and my sister, we should not write anyone off. Anyone can be a candidate to preach the gospel. 
Paul is a time he was persecuting the church. But later on, that's the reason why God set him apart. When he was called, he never consulted a man. He started to preach the gospel. And even other churches heard of the same. Though some trembled, but as time went by, they realized that truly this man has been converted. Each one of us has a story. Each one of us, if you look at our background, even I was speaking, there was a time that I was lost. But this grace found us. This grace found me. And here I am today sharing with you the same message. And it says in verse 22, And they praised God because of me. And they praised God because of me. So when they heard that Paul, who persecuted the church, has changed and has become a preacher of the gospel, they praised God because of him. That's the last verse of this chapter. In the next chapter, before we go to another break, in the next chapter, which is chapter number two, we will see the acceptance of Paul. We will see how he's going to contend even with Peter or Cephas, who already met before, concerning the gospel, concerning the teachings that the church in Galatia was receiving, and God shall bless us. My brother and my sister, I urge you to stay tuned. We'll take a short break, then we are going to conclude our sharing for tonight. Thank you. Welcome back to the final part of today's Bible expedition. We have been looking at the book of Galatians. Brothers and sisters, the version that we have read is in NIV. We have seen Paul introducing the book by calling himself apostle and introducing his office and also revealing to us the recipient of that book that was the churches that were in Galatia. And he goes now to the reason why he was writing this book. He tells them or rebukes them or asks them why now they are changing from the gospel that they received before and even says that if anyone, including himself, or even an angel can come with a different gospel, cast be that person. So the question that we are learning today, you, which gospel are you having? Is it the gospel that is taught by men? Or is it the gospel of the word of God? My brother and my sister, the ch it's not about the church church has no kingdom it's not about the pastor pastor has no kingdom to take us it's not about the religion religion has no kingdom to take us it's about jesus christ the day when he said is in father's room house there are many rooms is going to prepare for us a place is the one who has a kingdom so we should follow the gospel of jesus christ and we have learned from paul he said that he never learned this gospel neither was it taught but he received it by revelation I encourage us, as we study the word, we should get the revealed word. A word or the word of God is hidden. The Bible is a closed book. It takes revelation for me and you to understand it. So we need to pray and ask God, even as we study, even as we are going through expedition, it's only God who can teach us and build us. Then also, as he continues to say or to speak, he also alludes to the fact that he was not called by men and was therefore not pleasing man. As Christians, we shouldn't be men pleasers. We should be pleasing God and God alone. Who do you please as a Christian in your life? Who are you pleasing? Are you pleasing your pastor? Are you pleasing your friends? That's hypocrisy. We should please God who has called us. And also we have seen Paul saying that there is a reason he was ordained or was set apart from his mother's womb. And that was to preach the gospel 
to the Gentiles. It also means that me and you, we have a reason. There's a reason why you were born. There's a reason why you are alive. There's a reason why you are living where you are living, working where you are working, born where you are born, doing what you are doing. Even hearing and watching me tonight, there's a reason. If you can go back to the one who made you, he'll give you that reason. If you leave that reason, you'll have a fulfilled life. You are going to serve your purpose. Paul served his purpose. Are you serving yours? As we continue, I urge us, let's walk in the gospel and the truth of God, and we shall be blessed. I want us to pray as we come to the conclusion of our today's edition, and God will bless us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, even for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for this grace that has saved us. Thank you that we are never called by men. We have been called by you. Help us to live a life that is pleasing unto you, but not to men. And glory will be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shalom and good night.